Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Today, we're going to talk about buzz baits and it's beginning buzz baits because there is a lot to talk about when you talk about buzz baits. There's the type of buzz baits, whether you get a, a buzz bait that's a clacker, or one that's not, one that uh, the different colors, what you do for trailers, where you throw them, how you throw them, counterclockwise buzz baits versus uh, clockwise rotating buzz baits, double buzzers. There's an awful lot to talk about when you get into buzz baits. We're going to get into beginning buzz baits today on Mark Fisher Outdoors. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Beginning Buzz Baits, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Fisher. Welcome to Mark Fisher Outdoors. So we're going to talk about buzz baits. I'm going to start with one of my favorite buzz baits. And again, I think, guys, that we're probably going to do several episodes about buzz baits because it's a phenomenal bait to throw in the springtime. And quite honestly, it's a phenomenal bait to throw Anytime the water starts to get, you know, into the mid 50s, believe it or not, you can throw it even when it's that cool out. And then you can literally throw this bait throughout the season. A lot of people think about it as a springtime bait and then kind of put it away. A buzz bait can really trigger big strikes anytime during the summer. You just have to know kind of the where's and when's and how's in terms of when to throw them. So let's get into just your beginning basic buzz baits. Like I said, one of my favorite buzz baits to throw, it's actually the Rowdy Buzz uh, lures uh, that used to be known as uh, Boogerman buzz baits. And, and Rowdy bought them and took over. But these are the buzz baits where they, the, the blade itself kind of clacks against the body you can hear that when it when it spins and I had taken that out there you go where it, let me kind of adjust that or tune that you can hear that clacking that's the kind of that's the buzz bait that I like the most I really like that clacking and and the reason that I like that clacking the most is because I think these are the buzz baits, when you time it right, these are the most ferocious bites that you will get on a buzz bait. They are, in my opinion, they are eating this buzz bait because they are protecting and they are mad and they are defending. They aren't eating this buzz bait, this particular buzz bait, as much as they are looking to get rid of it and kill it. When you get a when you get a buzz bait that's kind of chirping along, that they're looking at eating. This I think they're defending, whether it's defending fry when they're fry guarding, or defending beds when they're making beds. And this is coming over making a loud racket, and they want it nowhere near them. And so they're coming up and and really attacking viciously. I love that. That's what I want out of my, that's what I want this buzz bait to do. There's a couple of things that I will do with a buzz bait just to get that sweet rotation. You can tune it by bending it out or bending it in to get it just right. That's not right because it's not hitting. And so you want to bend it in a little bit so that it clacks but spins freely. And then the other thing that you want to do is you want to try and get a little bit of a squeak. And that's why I had this bent out. If I bend this out right now so that it isn't clacking and it's just spinning, pretty quiet. Not much there, right? A little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that rivet and I'm going to just bend that rivet. So I'm going to take... 
my cutters and just bend that rivet up a little bit so that it's not flat. I want that rivet to kind of be uneven. So can you see how I've kind of bent that up there so that it's a little uneven? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hook sharpener. I'm just going to rough up. Now you can hear a little bit of a, a wobble. Hear that wobble? So it gives you kind of, it, it, there's a little bit of a wobble to it and a little bit of a squeak to it or a little bit of a, you know, er, er kind of sound. Now when I have that and I combine that with, when I tune this back down so that it clacks, I'm getting some sweet little noises out of that buzz bait. That is what I'm looking for. Perfect. Right there. That's what I'm looking for out of a buzz bait. And I will do that tuning to buzz baits, whether they're clackers or non-clackers, especially, quite honestly, if they're non-clackers. So let's talk a little bit. And, and again, I don't want to get too far into this, but... When we're talking about where to throw a buzz bait, one of the things to be aware of is you need to look at your buzz bait. Your buzz bait is curved, and when it goes when it goes around, it is digging into the water this way, which means that it is going to pull your bait to the side. So this buzz bait is going to go one way or the other. The only buzz bait that won't go off to a one direction or the other direction is a double buzzer because those blades are turning the opposite direction and they'll run true. But no buzz bait will actually run straight. They'll always be digging to one side or the other, which means they're going to go off one direction or the other. When you know that, if you know that this buzz bait, for example, is going to go off to the right, you want to make sure that you're casting to the left of targets. So, for example, if you've got a piece of wood standing up in the water and this buzz bait runs to the right, you want to cast to the left of that target so that as it comes off to the right, it will end up coming in contact with that target. When it does, that's the time that it's going to trigger that bite. When it just ticks that pier post or when it ticks that limb or that rock or whatever it is, that's a, that's a time you want to hit as many targets as possible with your buzz bait. Yes, you can get bit in open water with a buzz bait. But a buzz bait is also a bait that you want to throw at as many targets as possible to maximize your strikes. The other thing with a buzz bait, and again, I don't want to get too much into a lot of the details, is you do not want, you want to make your cast. You actually want to feather your cast with your thumb so that you are stopping your cast, engaging your reel, and getting that buzz bait started the minute it hits the water so that you are not letting so that that buzz bait is not sinking in the water and you're spending the first three or four 
yards of your cast, pulling that buzz bait out from under. You want it to hit the water and start buzzing the minute you land on the water. That's number one. And number two, don't just straight retrieve it. You can get bit doing a straight retrieve, but a straight retrieve and then maybe a pop, maybe a, a little faster retrieve. Vary that retrieve so that it mimics a fleeing bait fish, sputters a little extra water. Those are the times that you're more likely to trigger that bite. There will be a lot of times when that bass is following underneath that buzz bait. And when that bait kind of stutters or speeds up, that is when you will get that strike. And boy, I tell you what, guys, the minute you see that happening, you'll be doing that quite a bit. So stay away from just a straight retrieve and vary that retrieve on your buzz bait. We're going to come back and talk more about buzz baits. We'll talk about what trailers to put on them, what line to use, where and when to throw them and things like that. But guys, a buzz bait is not just a bait to throw when it's raining out. That's what a lot of people think. There's a lot of times that you can throw them, a lot of different colors to use, a lot of different styles. We'll talk more about them in future episodes. I appreciate you tuning in. Guys, if you like the content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We would really appreciate that. We're coming up on 2000. We're trying to get this channel going. So we would appreciate your support in that endeavor. And we will see you tomorrow for Underwater Wednesday or On the Water Wednesday tomorrow. And we hope that you'll stick around for that as well. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.